Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. With RDNA 4, will we see AMD catch up to NVIDIA in terms of how ray tracing is handled? And will we see a much more NVIDIA-like approach from AMD going forward? We're going to be discussing all of this and how it compares to RDNA 3 in this very video. But of course, that's after this message from the video's sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by WhoKeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as Home Keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So a couple of people actually sent me the link to this patent and were asking my opinion regarding it. Now, I'm not quite sure who initially found this, so I apologize if I'm not giving the uh, original person credit, but again, I was just sent the direct link. And the patent was published on the 29th of June, so just a few days ago, as of the time I'm recording this video this year. and it was initially filed in December 28th, 2021. So that's pretty typical. Obviously, uh, GPUs, CPUs, or pretty much anything take quite a long time to bring up. So it's not particularly surprising that a patent is filed way before the you know potential release. Now, again, RDNA 4 looks like it's going to release sometime late next year. So honestly, in terms of how the timelines for this go, it, it wouldn't be surprising if this is RDNA 4 purely based upon that. Now, before we get into the actual patent in detail, I do want to say that A, a patent is a patent. A patent is not necessarily a product, i.e., this could be an approach that AMD were researching and then decided to patent but doesn't actually come to fruition. So for all we know, you know, in RDNA 4, they don't support ray tracing. And instead, when you plug it into your PCIe slot, it makes you a cup of coffee, i.e. this may not actually be something which is related to any product that AMD will ever release or have any plans ever to even implement. So with that said, um, we're also, of course, doing some analysis on a patent. Now, patents are purposefully ambiguous but with all of those caveats out of the way let's have a quick look at the abstract so it's a processing unit which employs hardware traversal engines and these basically um, are for the acceleration structure itself now i'm going to make this really simple and things get a lot more complicated in reality but in essence just think of ray tracing as basically having two major steps now the reality is a lot more complicated than this but for sake of this, let's just be really, you know, boil it down. So ray tracing, what you have to do essentially is figure out what stuff intersects with what. So basically speaking, if you have a light source, let's just say a flashlight, what will that flashlight actually hit in the scene? And then once it hits a specific object, where does it bounce to? So basically what you are looking at there is basically the intersection of light and how what pixels those actually touch. So this is a very complicated thing. Now AMD for RDNA 2 onwards have implemented that in terms of their TMU. So this has been the hybrid approach and yeah, it's been of course the same approach that Sony, that Microsoft have leveraged. Now there have been some differences in how this works for RDNA 3 but with RDNA 2 and 3, in terms of the acceleration structure, the traversal of the BVH, or bounding volume hierarchy. Now, BVH, you can basically think of as a sorting mechanism. So, essentially, all of the scene data is thrown into different boxes, quote-unquote, and then, essentially, what happens is, with AMD, there's a shader which is run on the compute units, and that basically essentially figures out what is happening in the scene. Now with NVIDIA, this is not quite how things work. They have instead their own, well, thing that actually handles this. And this was actually first implemented back with um, Turing. My brain went blank there. That's helpful when I'm recording a video. 
Now, there's a really nice article from chipsandcheese.com, which I will link in the video description. And these go over some of the differences of RDNA 2 and 3 versus the various NVIDIA architectures. So if this is something that you are interested in, if you're a bit of a geek, then I would encourage you guys to check it out. Now, if you take a look at the patent, essentially what they state here is that by employing a quote, hardware traversal engine, the processing unit is able to execute traversal process more quickly and efficiently. This conserves processing resources and improves overall processing efficiency, end quote. Now, I won't bore you through all of the various uh, diagrams because, well, they are somewhat repetitive to describe and I'm not going to keep saying, see, look, you've got a traversal engine there, guys. Like, you can quite clearly see it on, on screen on the various figures. Well, hopefully you can see it okay anyway, depending on the resolution of the device you're looking at. There is also a much deeper explanation of how all of this works of course in well the background and the detailed explanation now what this appears to me is that this is not for rdna3 now if someone feels differently i would like to hear from them you know feel free to comment but to me this does not sound i mean for one they're specifically speaking about a hardware implementation of the traversal engine and to my understanding from official documentation from amd and again just reading online and from what i've heard from various people this is not something that rdna3 contains so i think this is for a later iteration of the architecture and it's going to be very interesting to see how this plays out now nvidia have been slowly improving their own ray tracing capabilities and i'll have a video that i've been working on now for quite some time with rtx 50 i've actually delayed it like three or four times simply because i keep hearing different things and i'm trying to get as much information as possible but from one thing i have heard with um rtx 50 it has significant changes in both the, the SM structure as well as ray tracing. So obviously AMD will have to continue to keep up. There was also the PS5 Pro patent, and I haven't, to be honest with you, got that in front of me to do an analysis of how that differs versus this. The patent from Sony, uh, yeah, from Sony, it looked a little bit like RDNA 3 with perhaps a few additional capabilities. But I may, at some point or another, decide to go much deeper in depth. RDNA 4, I've mentioned multiple times in leaks that it is considerably better than RDNA 3 in terms of ray tracing. And it does help to catch up to NVIDIA. So perhaps this is a sign that that information is correct. At the end of the day, these architectures are not available on shelves at the moment, of course, as everyone knows. But it's going to be very interesting to see what capabilities AMD actually put into these things. And while the high-end stuff, for example, you know, the RTX 1490s and that type of stuff is very cool. I think we can all agree that honestly, it's the mid-range at the moment that I'm most interested in. Because obviously, you know, not everyone can spend like 2000 bucks on a GPU. I've heard that Battle Mage is really good actually for ray tracing. Um... RTX, uh, sorry, um, ARC is not bad. Uh, it's actually pretty impressive. I have heard some very, some very loose rumors that it's much more NVIDIA-like um, in RTX. Um, that, uh, sorry, the Battle Mage is a lot more NVIDIA-like. It's got a lot of the features of um, of RTX 40. But whether all that does actually mean things like micro meshes and that type of stuff, I honestly cannot tell you guys. I'm trying to find out a little bit more information about that, but it's going to be extremely interesting to see how all of this shapes up. And one final thing I want to just briefly go over. Um, I want to give credit actually to WCCF Tech, although the original source of the news was PC Watch, but I initially found this article again on WCCF Tech. And I think most of this does speak for itself. So we'll just very quickly go over the TSMC N3P and N2. So according to those, uh, according to the official information, we're going to be seeing a significant uptick in performance. So you can see yourself uh, this slide, continuous enhancements in N5 and N4, and how, of course, we see the chip density and speed slowly start to ramp up. But really, things start to become a lot more improved when we start to see N3 PPA, for example, versus N5 V1. So, of course, it will differ depending on the actual thing which is being produced because not everything scales the same. So, for example, ALUs or, you know, whatever, that scales a little differently to, let's say, SRAM. So, certain things scale differently. This is one of the reasons that, you know, we're seeing 
stuff basically being produced on packages but um sorry on chiplets excuse me not packages on chiplets come on brain you can do it you can do it you've had enough coffee um however uh, it's going to be very interesting to see what actually happens with amd uh, and uh, nvidia as they start to incorporate these technologies uh, N2 development is allegedly on track. N2 technology development is on track for volume in 2025. Uh, 256 meg um, MB SRAM average yield is 50%. Nano sheet device performance is plus 80%. TSMC nano sheet technology demonstrated excellent power efficiency and lower VMIN, better fit for energy efficient compute paradigm. So you can see that there is a significant improvement in. Uh, the speed at the same power consumption, re power reduction at the same speed is very significant, up to around 30%. And chip density is obviously also improved quite considerably as well. Now, naturally, these are going to be extremely sought after. TSMC are, at this point, of course, just absolutely killing it in the industry. You know, just about everyone is using them, including, of course, big companies like Apple, NVIDIA, AMD. So, obviously, capacity is going to be very interesting. It's one of the reasons I've heard the RTX 50 was delayed, so that, basically, NVIDIA can essentially uh, throw as much capacity as possible onto AI stuff. But, um, yeah, I think that's just about it, though, for this particular video, guys. Hopefully, you have enjoyed it. It's a quicker video today. Uh, hence the reason I'm not on camera. I'm working on a couple of very fun projects at the moment. I was doing a lot of photography today, uh, which is something I don't do as much now. And I'm really enjoying doing this uh, very silly project, actually. You'll hopefully see it in the next couple of days, assuming something doesn't go kaboom. I've done basically all the testing. It is a very silly, very fun project. But um, with that said, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Stay safe. Bye for now.